scientists call this spawning. It is how coral reefs reproduce to renew themselves. On Australia's Great Barrier Reef, it happens just once a year, on the fifth night after a full moon in November. But this year's event was not as spectacular as usual. A recent El Nino weather pattern and rising sea temperatures have killed 22% of the reef. In the northern third, almost all of it has been what scientists call bleached. Clearly the spawning is down this year because there are so few acroporid corals left. We lost about 90% of them in the bleaching event and they'd been impacted by two years of cyclones previous to that. So uh, there just weren't very many adult corals here to spawn. The Great Barrier Reef was already in trouble because of development along its coast, warming seas and the dumping of dredged spoils near the reef. Last year, the United Nations UNESCO agency considered putting it on its in danger list, a first step towards removing prestigious world heritage status. Australia's government promised to act and update UNESCO regularly about the action it was taking. It's resilient. It's alive. Next week is the deadline for the first progress report and on Friday Australia's national and state environment ministers met to finalise what will be in it. Hopefully uh, UNESCO uh, will look positively upon the report that's going forward because this is something that not only do Australians treasure but people around the world treasure because the Barrier Reef is truly something special. Australia's government has a 151-point action plan to tackle the reef's ill health and says it's committing nearly $2 billion to improving it. This interim report lists the achievements to date. The dumping of spoils from dredging has been banned, where coal ports can be built has been restricted, and the amount of agricultural pesticide running into the reef has been reduced. But the single biggest threat to the reef is climate change and on that, say some, Australia's actions are irresponsible. Australia is the largest exporter of coal in the world and we've seen this year really significant support for a massive expansion of the coal industry. So we think the first thing that they need to be doing to take the health of the reef seriously is to start with a ban on new coal mines. Australia will present its progress report next week, but it won't be until 2020 that UNESCO will say for sure whether enough is being done to secure the Great Barrier Reef's future. Andrew Thomas, Al Jazeera, Sydney.